after three years of working from home, I finally invested in a dream desk setup. My goal was to create a space that not only got me excited to work, but allowed me to get more work done in less time. On top of that, I needed an area that was not only comfortable, but promoted healthier habits. My old desk was just the opposite. I had a board on the desk so both monitors would fit and I needed a second desk just so my keyboard and mouse would fit. And to make things worse, I've been sitting in the same chair for over 10 years. It was never comfortable. It was always firm. So I modified it myself with pillows and blankets, which made it bearable, but it's not good for your back. And thus, my journey began. Using the power of the internet, I did a ton of relevant research and thoroughly looked at every single product to find the perfect setup. And then I came across this sweet deal. This is a Foley Jarvis laminate standing desk. I ended up going with the 60 inch oak top with the black grommet color and the black desk frame. And I ended up adding the programmable memory switch to make it easier to adjust the height. This desk in total only cost me $756, which may seem like a lot, but for a 350 pound weight capacity and a 15 year warranty, it blew the competition out of the water. I mean, just look how beautiful this desk is. It's clean, there's plenty of room, so I'm not cramming up a bunch of space to try to get work done. And the programmable memory switch makes it easier for me to be productive while standing up. So I'm not sitting in my chair for hours at a time, making it easier to get more done and more importantly, takes a lot of pressure off of my back. The one thing that I should have ordered that I didn't is a cable management tray because my cable management could definitely use some work. Just, just a little bit. On top of my desk, I have two 27 inch curved Samsung monitors. One is a CF390 series. The other is an IT older model, but it still works great. Having two monitors is definitely cheaper than having one ultra wide monitor and having more screen space definitely makes workflow and multitasking more efficient. Or when I'm not listening to music and gaming, that is. If you're interested in picking up one of these monitors, I recommend getting the CF390 series because it is VESA compatible and allows you to mount the monitors on arms or other objects instead of having to place them directly on the desk. The computer powering these monitors isn't anything special. It's just an i5-3570K processor with a 1070 GTX graphics card with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then I'm not really sure. I have a couple solid state drives attached to it. Plus I do have a one terabyte external hard drive for backing up important files. The real power is right here. This thing is a beast. This is my 16 inch MacBook Pro in space gray with a six core i7 processor. And I do have 16 gigabytes of RAM with a AMD Radon Pro 5300 graphics card. Now I ended up getting the 256 gigabyte solid state drive instead of the 512, it's no longer available. And the main reason for that is most of my work I do on an external solid state drive anyway, so there was really no need for me to have more storage. There's a lot of features about this computer that I really like, including the fingerprint scanner. This allows you to just scan your finger without having to type in a password to quickly access your computer. And another great feature is the touch bar. The touch bar allows you to do a bunch of different things if you're editing videos or just navigating the brightness or the volume of your computer. It's basically an entire menu on that touch bar for whatever application you're using. I got this computer so I could work from abroad without having to miss a beat. And it also allows me to multitask. So if I'm rendering on one computer, I can get work done on the other so I can be more efficient with my time. I'm more of a PC kind of guy, but I got a MacBook Pro because I know they hold their value. On top of my desk, I have a 36 inch Corsair mat, which protects it from scratches from my keyboard and my mouse, which I ended up getting as a gift from my friend Brady. The keyboard I'm currently using is Razer's Black Widow mechanical keyboard. I don't recommend it because it sounds awful. Yeah, worse than nails on a chalkboard. Next to my keyboard is the Steel Series Rival 700 Series. It's a cheaper mouse, and at the time I got it primarily for gaming. That's why I only got a wired mouse instead of a wireless one. I've had it for a few years now, and so far it's been pretty decent. Up next is the microphone you're currently listening to, which is the MXL 990 XLR microphone. 
I chose an XLR instead of USB for quality. Plus when you're upgrading to studio production equipment, it's easier and more compatible with studio production than using just a regular USB microphone. This connects directly into my audio interface, which I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. And to keep my mic in place, I'm using the MXL BCD mic stand. For my speakers, I'm using Logitech's X540 5.1 surround sound speaker system with a subwoofer. This includes matrix mode and can go from 40 to 20 hertz frequency and has a response rate of 40 to 20 kilohertz. I ended up buying them brand new many years ago, but you can still get them on Amazon for around $450 at the time of this recording. But if I don't want the walls to shake, I end up just using my Galaxy Buds, which came with my phone. And honestly, these are my first pair of wireless headphones and they are awesome. If you don't have any wireless earbuds, go get some today. To keep my earbuds and other accessories charged, I use Samsung's fast charging wireless charger. This thing is awesome because it not only charges my Galaxy Buds, my phone, but any other device that allows wireless charging. That way I don't have to have cords all over the place. I can just have one cord, one charger for all my devices. Whenever I get bored, but I wanna remain productive, that's when I pull out this beast right here. This is the MPK mini if you ever aspire to make music or make beats this thing for the price is a killer device honestly i don't use it as much as i should but if you're looking for something to make music to make beats you know a beat pad that's a good quality for a low price the mini has been perfect and i wouldn't recommend anything else and finally we get to my chair now this actually took the longest amount of time out of all of the things to order because this is what I'm gonna be spending most of my time in. And if you have chronic back pain like me, you'll understand. That's why I decided to go the ergonomic route. And after filtering through all these fake ergonomic chairs, these gamer chairs, I then had to find a chair that didn't have 4D armrests. I'm not really sure why someone wants to visit another dimension using their armrests, but for me, I like my armrests nice and sturdy. So after thorough research, I ended up getting Staples FlexFit Hiking Mesh Chair for $170. The price does fluctuate, but even if you spend over $200, this chair is well worth it. I've been using it for over four months, and the relief this chair has given me is night and day. Before, I would sit for 20 to 30 minutes and have back pain but now I can sit up to four hours without experiencing any discomfort. The chair does come disassembled with about 20 different parts and only took me about 15 minutes to put together. I made sure the headrest was adjusted, the back support was in the right spot, tested the cushion of the armrests, I even upgraded the wheels for smoother gliding, which I highly recommend, especially if you're using plastic wheels. Oh, and you probably noticed that I no longer have my guitar mounted on the back of the wall. I replaced it with 3D acoustic sound panels that are not only for high density soundproofing but they're also decorative and make the place look nice to get them to stick to the wall i just ran over to walmart and picked up some command strips it's very simple you just put one on the back of the sound panel one on the wall which allows you to mount anything to the wall pretty easily if you are interested in creating a similar workstation for yourself i will have affiliate links for each of these products that i mentioned down below in the description. I do plan on upgrading my workstation further down the road, so if you have any questions about my setup or any recommendations for me, please feel free to comment down below, especially if you are interested in checking out part two, which is, it's not gonna be anytime soon, six months, maybe a year down the road, but I will continue to upgrade my workstation. And if you're interested in hearing about it, comment down below, smash that like button, and as always, my friends, I will see you in the next one. You seem like